The Empress closes its season, and all the conflicts come to a head. Elizabeth has gone over to the dark side, it seems. Instead of being the dutiful wife to France and bearing his children, she is out drinking all night with his brother, Maxi. If you cannot beat them, join them. I am not sure. But the Empress who cared about the people, we hope she is still somewhere inside her. France still has a soft spot for our Elizabeth. Even after gifting her a gallant white horse, he must draw a line in the sand, even though he is having his mother take care of it for him. After bringing her in and the royal guard blocking her from horseback riding outside the grounds, Sophia tells Elizabeth that she has two options. 1. They can annul the wedding where she can go freely back to Bavaria or follow the rules of the house. By the way, the rules are stricter than before. Appointment with her husband, accompanied by a supervisor, and no more unlimited ladies in waiting. She is basically a prisoner with plenty of yard time. Maxi is telling the truth to the cabinet that the Russians leaving the border states out of intimidation is greatly exaggerated. The cabinet members are nervous. They are putting their lives at risk, after all. They reassure Maxi that they can arrest France tonight. He even approaches his mother about the idea, who will not have it. She says, only God shall choose the emperor. Maxi points out she chose the last ones as if she does not know she is playing God all along. Case in point. Later, when a high-ranking member of their cabinet tells Maxi that France's plan worked and the Russians are retreating, the sniveling brother refuses to call off the plan until he speaks to his mother. To his face, Sophia tells Maxi that all the men in her life are weak and not worthy of being emperor. She has been running things for years as the dutiful wife, but Elizabeth played the game to stay in control. And that is when both storylines converge. France refuses to see his wife and, when soar back in her room, Maxi arrives. Lightheaded with the world spinning around her, she tells her brother-in-law that his mother wants Elizabeth gone. In a classic forbidden romance trope, as Elizabeth is sitting on the floor hyperventilating, he comforts her by saying that soon there will be a change, and he wants the Empress by his side. They kiss, and after a long couple of seconds that felt like an eternity, she pulls away. Then she tells the very blonde Michael Cyra lookalike to leave. Soon, Ava comes to her side, still pretending to be a lady in waiting. She examines the Empress and finds she is pregnant. The only problem is Maxi must boast about his almost certain takeover of the throne and that Elizabeth has indicated she will be by her side. France dutifully punches him in the face and has him sent away. When Elizabeth talks to France about the wonderful news, she cannot get a word out before he accuses her of scheming behind his back. She calls him a coward, he calls her a spoiled child. Elizabeth decides to go back to Bavaria. Lastly, Ava stabs her handler, Egon, in the back. We presume she alerts the royal guard of the plot to kill the emperor. They kill him on the spot while screaming, for the people. Ava's other contact. Elsa confronts her and says if she ever leaves the grounds, she will be killed immediately. Before Amelia can turn Ava in for being an imposter, Ava pushes her to her death over a railing in the palace. Meanwhile, Theo arrests Maxi for treason, or that's what we think is happening. The season ends with France running after Elizabeth, who ends up climbing out of her carriage and into the crowd of angry citizens that block the gate. She walks among them and shows them empathy, even taking a couple of them into her arms. A servant reports back to Sophia that she has told the crowd she is pregnant, a power move that will gain her sympathy and popularity with the people. The Empress is kind of a mixed bag. The stories are very much like things we have seen many times before, the rough marriages, the betrayals, the tender moments between friends, the sadness of losing someone. These are all moments that are very much part of real life. But when there are so many shows using them to tell the same stories over and over, you might suffer from deja vu while watching The Empress. The writing also falls into some common pitfalls where characters behave in illogical ways and the writers just want the story to keep going. And to do that, they use some tropes that, more than exciting or intriguing, are just annoying. The ending suffers from this, and it is clear that everybody in the production team is waiting for that second season. It is nice to leave some things in the air with the hope of following them in the next season. But when it comes to the viewing experience, it might not be as satisfying as the writers think it is. Fortunately, the sloppy writing can be overcome thanks to some fantastic acting. The entire cast is on fire in The Empress, especially Devram Lingnow, who plays the title role. The 24-year-old actress is quite amazing, and she has an expansive range that allows her to go through an entire spectrum of emotions throughout the entire season. She begins as quite a rebel, but as the weight of life begins to leave its marks on her, you can see that she starts maturing as a woman in very subtle ways. The rest of the cast also do an amazing job of supporting Ling now in her journey. The actors make even the most baffling of writing decisions work, so for some people those writing pitfalls might not even become an issue in the long run. The Empress is a beautiful production, and it is also quite entertaining. If this is your first show of its kind, you will have a blast. If you're a veteran of the genre, then it is fine but it lacks personality traits that might separate it from the rest of the shows trying to do the same. Thanks for watching, and if you are new to our channel, subscribe and click the bell icon so you do not miss out on our latest videos.